What if the speed of light was 30 miles an hour? What if Earth had two suns? Which cereal mascot would win in a what fight? What if everyone lived underground? What if, it rained what if money grew on what trees? What if pigs could fly? I don't know if that would actually happen. It's much easier to store a unicycle than to store a horse. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Absurd Hypotheticals, the show where we overthink dumb questions so you don't have to. I'm your host, Marcus Lehner, and I'm joined today by Alex Williams and Ben Storms. Say hi, guys. Hi, I'm Alex. Hey, I'm Ben. You may notice Alex isn't one of our regular people. What? He is a special guest for today and for next week as well. Get hyped. Alex Williams is a friend of the podcast, an awesome podcaster himself. Uh, he does cool stuff like his Broken Bulbs podcast, where he does interviews with people about their failures and how they improved on that. Very cool listen. And you just started a new one, which I'm hyped for, which is a Star Wars podcast called I Promise the Clone Wars is Awesome. And as you have described to me, it is your buddy has not seen the Clone Wars as the animated show specifically. Yeah, yeah, the animated TV series. The Clone Wars anime teasers, which I am a huge fan of, mm -hmm. and I guess you are too, so you are having your buddy see it for the first time in a podcast format, which I have no idea how that's going to work, but it sounds very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're we're recording, so we're watching arc by arc through a, a custom ordering of episodes, because there's a lot of random episodes that don't... If anybody's watched The Clone Wars, they know there's a lot of filler, and so we kind of took those out and then I just left in kind of the important arcs, the ones that introduce important characters and show their development through the story. And, uh, and so we're watching those and with each arc after watching it, we come together and we talk about and we I, I try to convince him that it's awesome. And he tries to withhold his true feelings, which, of course, <laughs> is that it is awesome. Awesome. I'm hyped. Also, I like that you shortened it up. It reminds me of, uh, I think it was Dragon Ball Z Kai was the thing that got officially released for Dragon Ball Z, where they were like, yeah, our show is all, all filler all the time, so we're going to re-release -re our original stuff with the stuff cut out. I think their first, like, 30-episode arc was done in, like, five episodes. Holy <laughs> cow. It's like, like, it's actually kind of hilarious. I, 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 wanna, I gotta look it up again. I'll do it after the show, but it's just, like, I think the amount of episodes was, like, an eighth or a tenth of what the original was because it was just that much of well people you know screaming in place and then it, the episode would cut for a cliffhanger <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah you can always tighten things up and uh i i find a lot of tv shows especially animated shows drag it on yep as someone who's caught up with one piece um on episode what? 987 <laughs> i can tell you yeah some shows got lots of filler <laughs> it's both way too many episodes and yet somehow not enough but speaking of people that scream and glow and have superpowers, we are going to be doing a random superhero fight today. So we've done a few of these in the past. Uh, and so the way that we do this, there is the wonderful superhero power wiki fandom website, which has a incredibly broad amount of information in it of any kind of random superpower you can possibly imagine. Every little side character from every little show it's broken down into its own Wikipedia page. They're all listed in there. It does not appear to be <laughs> edited by anybody <laughs> <laughs> based on some of the descriptions that we've seen. So what we do is we hit random three times. We have each gotten three random superhero powers, which we have then combined into our own unique self-made superheroes with their own little backstory. After that, we go to our proverbial bar battlegrounds of uh, Central Park in New York City, and we have our heroes face off, where we'll discuss how that fight would go, who would win. We basically establish the chances of each person winning, and then we spin the wheel of fighting, <laughs> which we have not yet named, um, to determine the actual winner of which one of our random superheroes is the best. So first, let's find out who our fighters are. Um, ben, I'm going to let you start. Tell us about your superhero. So we're going to actually go back into Greek legend. Uh, have you ever heard of the Mares of Diomedes? I, I have not. You have not. Sounds like the, like a crime lord moniker. <laughs> well, so the, Mar the Mares of Diomedes were a group of horses that were owned by Diomedes, uh, who was the, the king of Thrace. And the reason they come up in Greek mythology is that 
they were one of the um, the 12 labors of Heracles slash Hercules, as you may probably know him better in Roman mythology, where Heracles had to go and steal these horses from Diomedes. Um, these were not any horses, you know, any normal horses. Uh, they ate human flesh and were, were very, very angry. And sometimes people said they breathed fire, but that's not always part of the st- story. And we're going to say it's not part of the story. So Heracles goes and winds up fighting Diomedes and overpowers him and then eventually winds up feeding him to his own horses and then freeing them. And then what happens after that is kind of unclear. There are a lot of different versions. Um, Sometimes they're just left to to roam free. Sometimes they are taken back to Olympus uh, to be sacrificed to Zeus, but Zeus refused them and sent a bunch of animals to kill them. And that actually is what happened, except that one got away and started roaming the world. And eventually cropped up, actually, he was the horse of Alexander the Great, um, you know, famous conqueror and whatnot, until eventually Alexander the Great actually died mysteriously. And there's many things that have been explained about that, you know, different illnesses he could have had, things like that. But actually, he was eaten by his flesh-eating horse, um, who then continued <laughs> roving the world, eating various people and beings. And actually, as he was doing this, he started absorbing their their minds just something about this mythical creature let him as he consumed this man flesh he sort of began to comprehend the minds of those he had devoured and he kept traveling the world until eventually he wound up in north america uh, in california specifically unfortunately in the la brea tar pit where he fell and was absorbed into the tar for some long amount of time uh, until in the 1960s like in 1960 itself, actually, he was exhumed and went right away and started eating actors. And after he ate some actors and could, you know, speak English, someone was like, holy shit, I can make so much money with this. And decided to make a TV show around him. Uh, and at that point, they started calling him Mr. Red. And now there were some issues that came up during filming, mostly that he kept eating people. And also, for some reason, had weird, like, tar that seeped out of him all the time from his time in the tar pits. But it went relatively well until eventually, of course, he, you know, broke free and resumed terrorizing the world. So my, I guess, super villain is Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed is a carnivorous horse. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of it. Um, so, so Mr. Ed's powers... Um, <laughs> Do you understand now I wouldn't tell you my name? <laughs> you could tell me Mr. Ed and I'd be like, I don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So so the powers that I, I uh, randomly was assigned were uh, carnivorous horse physiology, which is the power to possess or have traits of, or be a carnivorous horse. The only known users are the mares of Diomedes, so I decided to just roll with that. <laughs> and it's pretty much just what it sounds like. It is is a horse that eats flesh. It's pretty straightforward. Then there is mind absorption, uh, the power to absorb minds and use them in some way. This one was very vague. I kind of rolled with the after, you know, consuming people, he sort of absorbs their mind as well. It's like how zombies get smarter every time they eat brains. Exactly. Sure. We'll go with that. (laughs) And then tar trail, which is the power to leave behind tar in one's trail. Almost useless. Doesn't actually do anything. Tar is really just kind of like very thick. It's effectively like really very thick, viscous oil. Um, you know, made of like decomposed carbon based whatever. I thought it caught on fire easily. It doesn't really. It will catch on fire, but like, you know, pretty high temperatures, so not particularly relevant. But it's kind of just sticky, and he can leave trails of tar behind him because I don't know. He was in a tar pit for a long time. We're going to go with that. So, love it. There we go. Mr. Ed, the tar trailing, mind absorbing carnivorous horse who has the mind of a demigod and you know, a great general inside of him. So tactics and stuff. Who knows? Marcus, what'd you do? <laughs> Start with the carnivorous horse. Um, funnily, my story also starts long ago in the time of Greek myths and legends. There were the Pleiades. Pleiades were the seven daughters of the sea nymph Pleione and the Titan Atlas, born on, my, on Mount uh, Colini, I believe that's pronounced. They were nymphs, which as far as I can tell... Just means mysterious naked women, but also kind of nature-y. There's really <laughs> not anyone telling you exactly what nymphs are. <laughs> now, the story of the Seven Pleiades is that they were the, the caretakers of some second-generation gods after birthing them. So they're all daughters of Titan Atlas, and then they all 
you know, got busy with some gods. Poseidon, Prometheus, Ares, Sisyphus, and since it's Greek mythology, Zeus, Zeus, and Zeus again. Then they hung around for a while and kind of took care of the kids until their dad Atlas died, at which point they were also very, very sad that they all killed themselves. And then Zeus turned them into the stars of Constellation Pleiades. Our story begins just a half step before they all off themselves, though, with the Pleiad Sterope. Because she didn't just have god babies. She was the only Pleiad who slept with a mortal man, and apparently was so ashamed by her action that she became invisible. I'd like to point out just for the context of this podcast that that's actually part of the legend. That's not me sneaking in <laughs> one of my three powers. That's actually what's written in the, in the, in the, in the information. Now, the, the rest of my Greek mythology knowledge comes from the Disney movie Hercules, so I can only assume that this sort of mortal child from Starope and her mortal man had to go live on Earth for a bit until they, like, proved themselves or some nonsense. Which brings us to our actual hero, who I'm calling Cassandra Theodorus, who, being alive in modern times, has a slightly, di- a slightly different path than Hercules' heroic deeds, which is being a gosh damn superhero. Her name is Starburst. So... The powers I rolled were the Pleiades physiology, the power to possess or have traits of a Pleiades nymph. Again, the only thing that seemed to be consistent about the mythology is that she's a beautiful naked mystery lady. But the next most common theme is that the nymphs possess like an infinity and power related to the place that they reside. So like sea nymphs get water powers, mountain nymphs have earth powers, etc, etc. It's a bit vague, so I kind of just decided to take the major points from her heritage as like her powers here. So her mother, Starope, was known for being invisible. So I'm going to say she has the ability to temporarily become invisible. Not like all the time, but she can tap into that. Um, and her nymph heritage is all sea nymphs. So not going too crazy the nature power. I'm just going to say she can make it rain. I don't know if that's going to be handy, but she can do that one. The next power I rolled was uh, plasma solidification. Power to connect plasma into a tangible form. So you can solidify or give solid-like properties of plasma with a level of solidity going from loose jelly to metal-like hardness or beyond. This is a weird one. Like, I don't really know what things are plasma or what solidifying is helpful for. So I kind of looked up who actually had the powers. There were two listed users. First one was the Lantern Corp from Marvel, which is like the in the, the Green Lantern universe, like where they can, you know, have a ring that shoots energy. Wait a second. Isn't that DC? Oh, <laughs> well... From DC. That's what I'm here <laughs> for. I'm, Thank I'm you. here to keep you on track. <laughs> so they use like emotions to do different energy plasma things, which seemed a little weird. And then the other one was one of the Ben 10 transformations, the, the ball weevil, which produces like sticky green balls of plasma that would then explode. Uh, the Ben 10 one seemed more appropriate and kind of more in line with with her because I'm, I'm saying she inherited this one from her mother as well because her mom is literally a star now so she can get a little bit of star power i guess and the last one is the that i got is the electrical enhanced condition the ability to use electricity to enhance physical and mental attributes uh they can use their physical and mental attributes to use electricity to stimulate the nerves this isn't like shooting lightning out this is like using electricity inside your body to make you like faster and stronger and react faster because you're like hyping up your nervous system and i was gonna originally link this one to like the nymph nature weather stuff but it's greek mythology so basically everyone has the every single one of them has a bit of zeus in there somewhere so this is just like the leftover zeus genes floating around the greek mythology pool um that are coming out here so pleiades physiology so i can be invisible a little bit i can make it rain i can have sticky green balls of plasma that explode and i am kind of a little bit faster and stronger and react a little faster thanks to my electrical enhanced condition here and that is starburst alex tell us about your superhero okay so my superhero his human name his normal name is just damien pumba and he comes from a place called velo city Uh, so he always wanted to make a difference in the world he he had big dreams He loved science, real big nerd, and one day he got his dream job on a super secret yacht going around looking for holes into other dimensions. So what he's doing for work is going around the ocean trying to find little holes into other dimensions because, of course, as we all know, the place where you're most likely to find portals to other dimensions is on the open ocean. So he's out there looking for these things. He's kind of got a Stargate thing going on on the ship. 
And then one day they get through. And when they find this portal and make contact, somehow a giant speeding warthog runs through the portal. (laughs) And the collision combined with him and a creature, a giant speeding warthog from another dimension, that gave him powers. And so his superpowers are he has warthog physiology, which gives him the abilities to be or mimic or use the same abilities as warthogs. And so I, I think he's, he's got tusks and he's got great gas. So he's got gas attack. <laughs> he doesn't ever transform all the way into a warthog, though, because then he loses his opposable thumbs. So during the day when he's at his day job in his secret identity, he just looks like a normal human. But then when he's out fighting, he turns his head into a warthog head so that he can use his tusks in combat. Those tusks are especially useful with his next ability, which is enhanced body part velocity. So this means they can move any part of their body at extremely high speeds in any direction, allowing them to cover a wide range of motion quickly. So he uses this to punch super hard and super fast. And of course, his favorite is using his tusks to pierce super hard and super fast. And it works pretty well for him since he is a a great superhero for Velo City, the city he lives in. Now, he's got one last power, which is dimensional bomb generation. Now, they, the website said (laughs) the user can create and launch bombs, explosives, and other volatile constructs composed of dimensional energy, which can have various effects on the target. It didn't really go into what those effects were. So I'm just going to say they're just like super, super powerful epic bombs uh that's what we're gonna roll with for now uh so that's uh that is speed hog uh the hero of velo city all right so what i'm hearing is we have we have two people who can throw bombs and a very smart horse <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna say what i have here is a warthog a horse and a person <laughs> there's a lot of ways to look at it yeah <laughs> so let's get ourselves started again we're, we're in central park I like, to, I like to start the conversation by saying, who would probably go after each other first? The, the, I guess the question is, Ben, if you are, a, your carnivorous horse has got to be the most aggressive of, of us three. I, I think that kind of just goes without saying. Except remember that he does have, have the mind of Alexander, the great inside of him. So he would think tactically. Mm. <laughs> the great strat, the great bloodthirsty strategist, and it's it's also a villain, right? You said your horse is my is horse a is a villain. villain. My horse is deaf. Uh, Mister Ed the Carnivorous Horse is a hundred percent a villain. <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind about this. So, would you say that Mister? Would you say we'll start this way? Would you do you think Mister Ed is more threatened by another animal like thing, or more just hungry for more people brains? Probably hungry for people brains. I would guess. Okay. So I, I, I'm definitely turning into a warthog to just kind of hide and, and look <laughs> like an idiot uh, so that I'm, I'm less desirable as a target. Okay. So, it could, so let's, say, let's, start, let's start off with me and Ben then and see, let's, pl- let's, let's play this out a little bit between us. Are you, are you like a super fast horse or are you, like, I forget, do you have any physical abilities besides I mean, being a horse? I mean, be- horses are strong. Horses, horses are strong and fast. I mean... The only, like, weird things about them mentioned and the things I was seeing were their madness caused by their diet of human flesh and sometimes their fire breathing, which I chose not to use, but also feels like maybe even the scale is slightly in terms of your, like, plasma and dimensional bomb throwing. But, (laughs) I mean, I generally assume that things in Greek myths are somewhat wilder than, uh normal life so yeah i feel like i feel like i feel like physically we're kind of you you probably have an edge on me but i don't think it's like that far apart Mm -hmm. (laughs) would making it rain interact with your tar at all um i don't so oh wait no a big old mess so so tar is actually water repellent i learned this i was trying to figure out what the hell they actually use tar for it is water repellent they use it actually on roofs to like seal them so Raining on the tar will actually have no effect on Mr. Red. <laughs> oh, damn, I can't beat you <laughs> by raining on you. Sorry to rain on your parade, Marcus, but... 
And that's why I'm here for very bad jokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think my main I think my main methodology is going to be like using some of my invisibility and you know speediness to set up some good explodey bomb throws on the horse. Question: How good is a horse's sense of smell? That's a good question. I'm good going. Uh, more acute than that of humans, but less sensitive than that of dogs, apparently. That's a big range. It is. <laughs> um, can horses smell you from far away? Let's see. Stallions can identify a mare coming into season up to half a mile away. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, as a, <laughs> as a mysterious, beautiful, naked lady. That feels relevant. <laughs> oh, no. I will say it's modern times. She does work. She does have a superhero outfit. She is not. Of course. Yes. Yeah. She has she has modernized the nymph approach to just putting yourself out there. <laughs> All right. So apparently, apparently, horses smell about fifty times better than humans, according to an article from HorseCanada.com. I love it. You, you know what? That's who I trust with all of my information i i mean i thought you i thought you might so what's funny is that i i started googling and realized what i've done this a few times in research for this podcast where i was trying to find out like how good the horse's ability to smell is and (laughs) what i type into google is do horses smell good (laughs) yeah not helpful (laughs) and i'm like oh i could have seen that coming oh my god wait horses can smell in stereo (laughs) so horses horses have they have like two olfactory bulbs, um, one for each nostril, and they don't cross. So the receptors in the left nostril go to the left bulb, and the right nostril goes to the right bulb. So horses can actually tell the direction the smell is coming from. So I think your invisibility also is not particularly useful against a horse. That is so cool. All right, my bombs are pretty good though. <laughs> the bombs are a problem. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I do have pretty quick, accurate bombs here. Yeah, that is admittedly a problem. I feel like I have an edge. If, I don't know if you want to like uh, throw in some percentages now. If you have any, do we have any anything else that might impact me versus you at the moment? Um, I mean, I feel like if I get to you, you're in a lot of trouble because horses on their own are pretty scary, and horses that have a taste for human flesh, I can imagine, would be a bit of a handful. So, I guess the question is, can I close the distance to you? Can I can I tactically bite you effectively? <laughs> tactical if, if, like it feels it feels like 60 40 to me like 65 35 somewhere in that range yeah that, that seems fair the plasma bombs are a, a, an issue i will freely yeah, admit you this. don't have any ranged attacks i do not i i do not i could try to trap you in some tar but you still like the question is can i sneak up on you which seems difficult because i am a large horse oozing tar I like the idea that the, the fight starts and I just start making it rain and you immediately put like a globe of tar over yourself. And you're like, ha ha! Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'm a horse. I don't know what you expected to have happen anyway. Like, <laughs> Oh, it's raining. <laughs> wow. I never encountered this being an animal. You know what doesn't work as well in the rain? Smelling. Uh, I, I guess, I guess that's, tr- I guess that's fair. All right. So let's say it goes the other way where... I start by becoming invisible, and therefore your attention is drawn more towards uh, the speed hog. Yes. Yes. Well, you know what? I I would definitely start letting out some nasty toots. Oh, no. uh, As as one of my warthog abilities to distract your scent, your, your ability to smell where I am. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let out just a ton of gas everywhere. And I'm gonna use my, uh, I, of course, knowing that you don't have range attacks, because I've been protecting the city forever. I've got documents on all of the supervillains. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw uh, dimensional bombs as fast and as hard as I can at you. Um, thanks to my enhanced body part velocity, I can throw much, much quicker. That's my, that's my strategy when dealing with a ferocious horse. And now I have to ask the question I always ask myself in difficult situations. What would Alexander the Great do? <laughs> <laughs> the answer, unfortunately, is that I do not have the, the mind of Alexander the Great. So I do not have this tactical acumen. Hmm. I feel like once he saw the bombs coming in, Mr. Ed would probably try to retreat out of range. But I don't know how effective that would be. Right. Because I'd be able to throw them pretty hard and pretty far. Yeah. And fast. How accurately? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know how accurately. I myself don't have great accuracy, but I don't know about <laughs> Damien Pumba. I mean, he's a nerdy scientist, so maybe not great accuracy. He's like played cornhole before and stuff, so, you know, he'll figure it out. Right, right, right. That'll help him. Yeah. But also, um, can you talk? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, this, is, this is a suggestion. Why don't you use some of that, some of that charisma you've gathered up over the years? That is true. I think that's a that's a hidden ability you're not tapping into. He has eaten multiple uh, multiple actors who are very charismatic, right? And Alexander the Great. And Alexander the and, Great. <laughs> and and apparently, uh, uh, and I, I want you to know, I'm giving all of this advice in person. I'm helping you become the best you, <laughs> that you that you can be. This is this, this is a very is positive message, hog. superhero. Show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like I'm like no. You know what? You can do this. You, you know what? You just got to believe in yourself a little bit more. I want you at your best when I destroy you with an dimensional bomb. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I believe in I want you. To, I want us to all know we did our best when you are atomized into millions of bloody pieces. So, so I guess here's the question then is as Damien Pumba is, has begun to throw these bombs, if you hear, whoa, hold your horses there. Are you going to stop throwing bombs? <laughs> Not at all. No, that's kind of what I thought, <laughs> but it was a good try. Here's here's my helpful advice or my my helpful point for you, Ben. He's got very fast hands and lots of and these bombs. Are they going to be particularly accurate against a charging and you know hopefully somewhat juking horse? Probably. So I guess I guess it depends on how many bombs are coming, right? Like, is this like a full on cluster bomb situation? Because that doesn't really matter. I I think I could throw a lot. I mean, I've. If... <laughs> says i can create them it doesn't say how fast that is like buddy the elf throwing snowballs because if that's the case it just may not matter is there any way i could outflank him probably not while you're invisible right i don't know it seems pretty it seems pretty pretty alex heavy at the moment it does feel pretty out i mean a large number of dimensional bombs feels uh good (laughs) It, it seems I, mean, I still think there's a real chance where like horses are pretty fast like right, yeah but alex also is, has specifically fast body motions which my favorite thing about that power is like what's the exact name of it again from the wiki it's, it's the enhanced body part velocity yeah my favorite thing about that is they have this page whole page for advanced body part velocity which is going to be entirely separate from fast body part physiology which is going to be entirely different from super speed to enhanced speed to like there's gonna be like 70 pages of of things that technically are just like 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 body go burr (laughs) (laughs) right right go burr can you add that page to the wiki i'm sure they won't take it down i i'm gonna if i can figure out a way to do it that i can find like literally one example that hasn't put it up there i'm totally going to (laughs) all right as as the one not engaged in this fight at the moment I'm, i'm i'm pegging it like 80 20 yeah like 85 15 even there, there's a chance that just like i can get going fast enough at, and i will say that a charging horse is a terrifying sight and it could affect you know accuracy to a degree i still think there's a pretty good chance that it just gets taken out by dimensional bomb on the way in so i would say yeah like 80 20 75 25 something like that so <laughs> works for me i'll take it (laughs) i i thought i was gonna lose this thing when i'm looking at this i'm like warthog physiology and i can move my arms fat you know i'm like what's a dimensional bomb but i'll I'll take it the the, the key is always finding the one power that's actually good that you got (laughs) right right dimensional palms that doesn't sound very good (laughs) or powerful (laughs) well they were so vague on the thing it's like oh it can have various effects on the target i'm like like what you know, give me something here. I'm very sad. There was there was one fight where I, I rolled and had to veto uh, omnipotence. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, that one's probably too good, huh? <laughs> By definition, a little a little op. All right. So now we have our last pair. We have our our last initial pairing here, which would be me versus you, Alex. We got the starburst versus the speed hog. So now we're both throwing bombs at each other. This one's interesting. So you have more bombs faster i have better reactions and probably more accurate bombs with with my electrical physiology also my bombs are technically sticky if that helps like they could be like 
used as mines or something if we get into like a real just like throwing bomb bombs off. freaking everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I think party. that's pretty much how it's going to be. It's just going to be a snowball fight between me <laughs> and you. It's going to be straight up snowball <laughs> fight. And yeah, I think I think you're naturally better at throwing. Like I think you you just have more firepower, but I think my invisibility does come in handy against you more than it did against uh Mr. Stereo Nose. Right. The the hard thing for me is going to be uh accuracy with with throwing against you because I'll be basically aiming from where I see the bomb being thrown. And so I'm going to have to wait till you throw something and then I'm going to have to try and throw it as fast as I can to that spot or where I hope that you're going to be, right? So that does give you a bit of an edge on that. Yeah, although, I don't know, it, it just feels pretty even to me. Like, like it seems like a cop-out to say 50-50, but it feels like a 50-50 to me. I think I think it's just going to be 50-50 because our, our range attacks, because we're not going to get in close to each other, our, and our range attacks are so similar they're right they're basically the same so yeah all right so that's so then that'll be the 50 50 so then we kind of look one tier down um so then after me who are the winner between me and alex's um it's kind of the same fight we talked about although i think i think we gotta get a little little credit to to ben's tech tactic tech tactical brain right absorption. Yeah. if ben isn't the initial person in the fight i think ben get actually gets a pretty big bump in percentages like yeah if he if he has time to analyze to watch what we're doing and to figure out okay he's doing that that's her power you know and and be able to understand our own strategies i think that that would give ben an edge for sure especially if he can prepare in advance too and say okay this is what i have to do more like i fi- i feel like we just like th- there's just all these bombs or everything flying around and like finally you throw the effective bomb and then just like and boom get horse i know where by a horse right <laughs> <laughs> boom, horse. yeah i don't know if that brings them all the way up to favored but maybe maybe close like it might be favored against me because i have decent i have good reactions but i'll have like used my invisibility already and i'm less fast about you know just throwing things your way so I'm going to knock me down from 60 to, like, actually 45. It, that's what feels right to me. That's kind of what I was thinking, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I can give you more than... Like, 40, 40, 40 60 percent. against... Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. 40 there. There's there's still a lot of bombs to overcome. <laughs> yeah. What's going to end up happening is you'll just get hit with one of the stray right. ones. Exactly, from, yeah. I'm just already uh, dead. Me and Starburst. You're just like, oh, yeah. no, I killed a yeah. horse. What a tragedy. <laughs> What a tragedy. <laughs> Esteemed horse character actor, Mr. Ed. Oh, no. <laughs> he played Black Beauty. Remember that? <laughs> all right. So then if we look at um, just hopping back, to, now that we've talked about all the parries, popping back up to me versus Ben. So basically both of us pairing off after that. I feel like me and, Al- me and you, Alex, I think we're still just going to be in range from each other. Maybe you get a slight bump, like 5%, but yeah. probably yeah, probably a slight bump there. And then Ben, if... You beat me. You, you've bitten. You you destro- you've bitten me and killed me. And now you're going after Alex. Still doesn't feel like doesn't feel like your odds get much yeah, better. Yeah, you don't have any point. particularly strong mental abilities, right? No. Mm-mm. Mm. No. no. Yeah, it feels about the same. Unless you can learn how to do my like electrical physiology from that bite, but that doesn't seem right. I'm gonna leave your percentage then the same as it was against just straight up against Alex. I don't feel like that changes much. Would would you have any psychological terror from having seen a horse bite off someone's face? Uh, I might. <laughs> All right. Five percent bonus. All right. <laughs> I was gonna give you one. I'll but... take one percent. One percent seems one percent for psychological damage. And then, uh... oh, shit. Quick to the math cave. I have to... No, 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 no. To the math cave. I, I, I should have <laughs> like I instead of using just a consistent spreadsheet here. I just root. I I just do it live each time in a way that doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense. I just hope my numbers multiply out to one hundred percent at the end of it. Yeah, that's that's the best part of every one of these episodes is when Marcus has to check if his math actually works and things that <laughs> were parts of a hundred add up to a hundred now. That that's my favorite part of every episode. And now, kids, time to add it all up. What's funny is that we add it all up, and then we also do a dramatic reveal with the spinner. So it's like not even like this isn't even the dramatic part. This is just the homework. All right, we got one last one. So Alex versus Ben. If Alex comes out of it defeating Ben, it's just me versus him again. It's, it's just the same thing. 
except now Alex is the one who could be like maybe taken by surprise a little bit. So I think that 5% would go just the other way. Like we had the 55-45 and now it's just 55-45 the other way. Because I, be, I could be invisible and sneak up on you. Ooh. Ooh. If you're busy fighting Ben. Yes. <laughs> yes, agree to lose percentage points. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm already, I'm already overpowered. We all know I'm gonna win this, one, right? Like, <laughs> Not, it, it all depends, it depends on the final on, wheel. You'll have the, the biggest wheel. wedge. Yeah. Trust in the wheel. Trust in the wheel. That sounds like a like a cult reassurance thing. Trust oh, in it the is. Wheel. And then everybody trust in the wheel. And then Ben, if you beat Alex, I I take one point in psychological damage. <laughs> sure do. Uh, boom. All right. Give me a second to figure this out all right all right all right i have the math i have the math so the ordering probably won't be too much of a surprise but in last place with a 18 or with the worst odds no places yet we'll see who wins with 18.1 percent odds is mr ed the cannibal horse yeah this checks out (laughs) good good job really you really tried your best out there (laughs) (laughs) for a horse you did great (laughs) i feel like this has become counseling this has become like counseling for a cannibal, <laughs> not cannibal, but like a carnivorous, a carnar- carnivorous horse. I mean, you can't rule it out. <laughs> With a flat 36% chance to win is Starburst, the mysterious naked Pleiades lady. And with the highest odds to win is the dimensional bomb thrown warthog, Speedhog, with a 45.9% chance to to succeed this is the biggest accomplishment of my life (laughs) well we're about to find out if it actually is the biggest accomplishment of your life because we are about to spin the wheel spin and the winner is starburst what an upset oh an upset (laughs) how did this happen let me tell you how this went so we start off our fight, and it's like, I can see Mr. Ed sniffing around, looking a bit wild-eyed, and she's like, Starburst's like, I know, this guy's got to cool off a little bit. And so she brings the rain. To counter this, Mr. Ed, with his <laughs> Alexander the Great tactical knowledge, creates a dome of tar around himself and, and laughs like the evil villain that he is, at which point Starburst just throws a bomb in the middle of the tar dome. <laughs> And what you see is just a tar dome close up, a bit of light shine through it, and the whole thing collapse to a smoking horsey corpse. And then out of the corner of her eye, and with her enhanced reflexes, she just manages to jump out of the way as a a rain of dimensional bombs disintegrate the ground around her. And she starts throwing just more and more balls throwing sticky balls at dimensional balls and it's exploding 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 and there's smoke and lights everywhere and then there's a break in the throwing and much to speed hogs warthoggy confusion there's no one there anymore throwing any throwing any explosive any throwing explosives and she has gone invisible and before speed hog knows what happens she reappears and just sticks a plasma ball right on his back and boom goes the dynamite victory achieved for starburst dang and And my last words i can i can i have last words my yeah i had last words in mind dang it now i forgot wait my last (laughs) words were you really deserved it you you worked hard for that (laughs) and then i let out a a big nasty fart (laughs) And on that note, it's time <laughs> to pop over to our What's Your Other question. Ben, or Alex, I'll start with you. You're the guest. Would you rather, and this one's going to be three options, would you rather have horse physiology, warthog physiology, or Pleiades physiology in real life? If you had to be, it has to be you, Alex. Can, can I ask a clarifying question? Yes. Yeah. Do you have the ability to change into this, or are you always this? Because that might affect my answer. Let's say you're always it, but you can kind of choose which form of it you want best. Like, if you want to do, like, centaur, you can do centaur. If you want to do, like, just the warthog head, you can do that. 
you can kind of pick your pick your poison a little bit on what you're doing. Okay, wait, Ple- Pleiades are they're like human shaped, right? Yes, they're they are generally they're like the they're they're like the naked women you see in like the more biblical stuff that are just kind of like demurely looking at other people. Like I feel like they frequently bathe in forests. It's a thing they do a lot. Oh, I'll be Pleiades. I'll just bathe in forests all day, every day. That sounds great. <laughs> that's like e- easy choice. That, I think that's the baseline. I, I I think that might end up being my choice as well. The thing is, that's the baseline. The thing is, does horse or warthog physiology improve your life? Does it get you going? Like, can you use those to improve your life in some aspect? If you had warthog physiology, you would never have to buy a can opener again. Just saying. Oh, wow. Just Incredible. saying. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Incredible buy, benefits. Ha- I, I have purchased two can openers in the past year because somehow they never work. How? You know, like, <laughs> you're like, oh, I need some beans. And you go to grab the can opener, and then you go in to open up the can, and then the can opener doesn't work. But you already started prepping everything else for the meal, and you're like, dang it, I got to go get a can opener. Have you ever been there? I don't think I bought two can openers in my life. How do you break a can opener? I've never had a can opener. Yeah, how did you break a can opener? Now, this is an Alex. Alex, how did you break a can opener? I'm blaming it on my roommates. I, it was not me, I promise. Okay. All right, I can, I can buy that. <laughs> that's my, that's, that's, that's my excuse. How, so I, I can see that. That would be, that would be useful. But I, uh, I also think my first thought with a horse was like, oh, you could get places, right? Like you can just gallop around to places. But then I thought, oh, I have a car that goes faster than horses. So, yeah, I'm just going to go with Pleiades. <laughs> so I I feel like this is one of those ones where, in terms of the actual answer, it's probably Pleiades. However, I'm going to make an impassioned case for a horse, which is that, to be clear, by the way, we just said horse, not carnivorous horse, right? Yeah, it's just horse. Okay, good. Yeah. Didn't want to have that have an impact as well. You know, I personally enjoy running. I don't do it as much as I used to, but I'm trying to get back into it. But I enjoy running. And I enjoy the feeling of when you get into like a really good run, running, like, like you know, that runner's high state where you're like, you're really feeling it and you're moving, you feel unstoppable. That feels awesome. I think if you were a horse, you could just do, just do that whenever the hell you want, right? You just go to a field and just run and it'll be great. <laughs> You can frolic now, man. Yeah, you can do that. You don't if have you're to wait to be a horse. Well. You just have to go out and do it. I do not have the endurance of a horse, unfortunately. Wait, if if you're a horse, can if you're if you have horse physiology, can you become a sperm donor? Because people pay a lot of money for horse sperm. Hey, that's true. That you is could get that is rich. true. I, I want one part of horse physiology, and I'll let you guess which one it is. Yeah, no one, no one ever <laughs> says you're hung like a warthog. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, okay, if if it was just the abilities that we got and not like transformed into them, I think I would maybe go with horse. That's fair, but you don't want to turn into a horse. No, no, I do not want to be a horse. Have you seen? Have you seen that uh, movie uh, Onward? That Pixar movie Onward. Oh, actually, the guy's like yet. a centaur. Oh, man, I and need to see that he, still. Uh, he lives in a world for mythical creatures, and he still can't fit in the car barely. Yeah, so. You know what? I yeah, I'm going. I, I'm solid on Pleiades. That's that's where I'm at. What are you thinking, Marcus? As much as I hate when my friends stand downwind of me, I don't think it's worth it to get the warthog physiology for that. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think any horse or warthog ability entices me away from well being generally human shaped, but also having like extra benefits there for, for for being Pleiades. You can do some like cool Greek gaudy stuff, I guess, and nature frolic. Yeah, it's probably just better. I tried. I tried horses. I did my best. All right, that's. I'm sure they. That's okay. You. We got we got some good discussion points in there. <laughs> some some <laughs> impassioned case for a horse, and that kind of brings us to the end of the episode here. Again, check out Alex Williams' stuff. The Broken Bulbs podcast is awesome. The Star Wars podcast I cannot wait for. As the time is recording, it doesn't exist yet, but I cannot freaking wait. <laughs> the time this release though, it will be out and available, so you can go check it out. If you like this show, the one you're listening to right now, go ahead, leave us a review. They're a great way to, you know, a great free way to help grow our show. You know, people see the reviews and they're like, wow, this person likes this show. I should like this show too and check it out. Or if 
you want to just be more direct about it and just give us money directly, you can go to our Patreon, www.patreon.com slash absurd hypotheticals and click on that become a patron button um, and you get episodes to all our bonus content, which comes out even when we're on hiatus. So if you have been like, wow, I waited so long and can't believe like that hiatus was such a drag the whole time you could just become a patron and gotten to listen to fresh new content during that whole period of time. So shame on you at that point. But thank you again, Alex. Pleasure to have you on the show. Pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you again next week when we answer the following question. We're doing a weird bug grab bag. Uh, a grab bug. A grab bug, if you will. We're going to grab some weird bugs. In hypothetical question form. <laughs>